Especially my brothers and sisters, we thank God for you. We thank God that we have another opportunity to come together to worship. And we are just so grateful that God has spared us one more time. We are now on the second Sunday in the month of January, the year 2021. Before we get started, I want to remind you that at the end of the service, we'll be doing communion. So go ahead and get you uh, some grape juice and a cracker or whatever you're going to use so that we will be able at the close to do communion together. So get your supplies ready. I want to remind you that uh, even though we are in a new year, uh, we are still dealing with a lot of the old stuff. Well, what do you mean? Uh, the problems that was there in 2021 20, uh, has not diminished because we are now in 2021. And the only thing that uh, is guaranteed that will make a difference is that if we make a change, and that is that if we improve, uh, we build on our relationship with the Lord, we build on our relationship with one another, we get closer to God and closer to one another. So we just thank God for you today, and we are so uh, happy, so filled with joy that we are able to come on this uh, second Sunday morning. And this morning, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the opening prayer myself this morning, and uh, and Sister Lyles is going to help us out on next Sunday. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, dear God, for this day. We ask you, God, that you would guide us, that you direct us, and that you, God, would teach us according to your will and your way. Help us, dear God, uh, to surrender ourselves completely to you. And Father, we just thank you for all of your many, many blessings. I, I I find it very necessary that we deal with a lot of the issues and we deal with a lot of the problems that we are facing because there are so many people who are burdened today and some are made to feel that they are not important. And I want to deal with it from a biblical standpoint because I have discovered that uh, even as recorded in the scriptures, uh, people have always found it necessary for them uh, to feel important. They have to try to make someone else feel less important. People uh, have decided that to make them feel uh, like they are more righteous, they will do all they can to convince you that you are not righteous. So I want to look at it from Paul's perspective this morning, as Paul wrote to us, and we understand that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God, and that men of God, holy men, uh, wrote as the Holy Spirit inspired them. So the word of God uh, in plain term, is breathed by God. They are breathed by God, every word. So the word of God is breathed by God. From the book of Galatians, I want to get right into it today. I was wondering where this would take me, but the Lord has shown me that this would be more than just one message on this particular topic. Uh, in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 7, I want us to pay attention to verse 7. And verse 7 said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Just put a pen in that verse right there. And today's, our subject today is committed, not just motivated. Committed, not just motivated. Let me begin with a story today, a story that I remember, and I hope I got it exactly right, but you'll get the point because the names may be a little bit different, but my father told me a story about a man who had three dogs, one he called Quick Start, 
The other one was slow go. And the third one was hold fans. Now, Quick Start is one of those dogs that at an instant he'd jump off and he'd be ready to go. But it didn't last. Slow Start was one of those dogs that just muddled around and, and, and eventually he'll go off a little bit. But when he got out there for a little distance, he would stop. He wouldn't hold out. But hold fast. Hold fast was a dog that once he got started, he started out on a trail and he would not quit until he had caught or ran whatever he was after up a tree. And he did not give in and stop until the master called him off. Well, I want you to understand something today that there are many who start out on this Christian journey, but quit. Some quit in just a short while and others last for years, but along the way, something happened and they gave up and threw in the towel. Some people quit because of a thing that happened in their lives. Sometime they was offended at church and they went home and forgot about God and church. Some people, because they had a heartache, they lost a loved one and they felt like God mistreated them because he took that person out of their life so they gave up on God. While there are only a few who dare to go through to the end, there are many who stops along the way. Even though this may not sound good to some and some will dare disagree, uh, but Jesus himself taught this, that there are those who will actually start out on the journey, but then will quit. I know some people say, well, they didn't have nothing anyway, but I want you to listen to the scriptures this morning. I'm going to give you some Bible verses uh, that deal with this thing. In Luke chapter 8, verses 5 to 15, the Lord uh, talked about it in this way, and I'm going to skip verses 9 and 10 uh, so you can read it for yourself. He says, so went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell among up on a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bear fruit a hundredfold. So now look at what he pick up in verse 11. He say, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Then he talk about the next group. He says, they on the rock are they which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. They don't have any depth, which for a while believe and in time of temptations fall away. Verse 14 says, and they which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So they start out, they work in the church, they sing in the choir, they lead prayer service, they even go to the pulpit and preach, but somewhere along the line, something happened. They get caught up in the cares of this world and they lose their sight on God and wander away. But verse 15, he said, but that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So there are those who get the word, but they're only able to hold on to it for a little while. Trouble in life sometimes has a way of dealing every person a different kind of blow. Because 
what one person can stand and stand up, the next one, uh, it will blow them over. Some people uh, will go through almost everything, but then there's that one thing. But that is why we must keep our mind focused on the Lord because the enemy is always coming at us with everything that he has to ensure that we will be just like him. You see, the enemy is already a de defeated foe. He knows that he has no victory. He knows that he has no salvation. So he spent his time trying all he can to get those who say they are called children of God to turn their backs on God. Here's the thing you need to understand today that even sometimes he used people who call themselves righteous to defeat you by trying and sometimes at work to get you to believe that what you believe in God is a waste of time, that the Bible is not true, that you are wasting your time going to church, you're wasting your time praying because the devil wants you to believe that it does not work. But my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the Bible lets us know that we must hold on to the end. Many hear the word, but are not doers of the word. But in order to be saved, we must remain in the race. We must hold on to the end. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Jesus said to us, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. I know that you've been told that all you have to do is get on the train. But the Lord told me to tell you uh, today that if you want to arrive safely at the station, you must stay on the train. You cannot just get on the train and jump off and jump back on every time you get ready because uh, one of these days you will jump and the train will have already arrived and it's too late to get on. John 15, verse 6 and 7, he says, If a man abide not, that's men do not stay in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, Jesus would not have said uh, that if a man don't stay in me, unless it is possible for a man to get out. Now, here is what we have to understand, my brothers and sisters. There is nothing that I can do to get you out. There is nothing that your brother or sister can do to get you out. But you can allow yourself to listen to the things of others and crawl out yourself. For God does not force men and women to do what he has commanded us to do. Well, if you don't believe me, go back to the very beginning. God made man in his image and in his likeness. God gave man the freedom to choose. But when man chose to disobey, God did not stop loving man. That's not why he put Adam and Eve out of the garden. He put them out because he loved them. Here is what he said about his expulsion of Eve and Adam from the garden of Eden. He said, if I don't put them out, they will eat of the tree of life and live in sin forever. God had a plan set up so that when man sin, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the man Jesus Christ. If we sin, we must uh, renew our relationship, not by going back to the very beginning and starting over, but by repenting of that sin and allowing God to take you forward. Today, I must tell you that you have to hold on. You must 
go back and read Galatians chapter 5. Paul started it off by saying, stand fast, therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ had made you free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't get yourself back in what you got out of. Don't you allow yourself to be tangled up with your old sins and your old habits and your old ways of doing. When Je Jesus said man cannot serve two masters, he was saying you can't hold on to me and hold on to your sins. You're going to have to let go of one or the other. So Paul is asking the question today. In today's text, he's asking, uh, after you started out on this Christian journey, and you were doing so well, what happened? Who hindered you? Who bewitched you that you stopped believing the truth and start believing a lie? Who convinced you that you need to go back and do that which God has delivered you from? Who convinced you he was talking to um, Gentiles, Christians who were being confronted by Jewish Christians uh, and Gentiles was telling, uh, was being told by the Jews that now in order for you to really be saved, you have to be circumcised. So here they were easing off to the side trying to find a way to get in good with Jewish traditions rather than holding on to the truth of what God said. The word of God teaches us um, that yes, in the beginning, God gave uh, a covenant relationship between him and the Jews with Abraham, that every man child that comes out of his mother's womb must be circumcised. But later he taught us that our circumcision availed nothing, not uncircumcision, the cutting away of the foreskin. The going through rituals does not save you, but the circumcision of the heart is what you must get. You don't need to cut off in the skin in order to be in good with God. You need to cut off sin in order to be in good with God. Oh, you know, the problem with us, my brothers and sisters, is that we have not strived hard enough to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Therefore, whenever we run into uh, some difficulties, uh, we will find ourselves uh, giving in uh, because uh, we don't like the way it feels. But my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this morning that you cannot deal with things based simply on how they feel. You must deal with things based on how they fit into the will of God. I get up in the morning, and I just need to throw this out to you. I get up in the morning, uh, and I exercise. And because of certain uh, conditions, it hurts. But I know that if I don't exercise, I will get to the point that I cannot use those muscles at all. So I must endure pain in order to be able to continue to use those muscles and survive. Because if I give up, the enemy has already won. So then my brothers and sisters, we must run with patience. What do you mean run with patience? Oh, you see the race that we're in. This Christian journey, this battle that we must fight, it is not a little scrimmage. It's not a short sprint. It's a marathon run. It's a lifelong battle. We must fight to the finish. But in the process, in order that we must have encouragement, we must look to the scriptures in Hebrews chapter 12, when it tells us we must consider Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and follow his example, for he saw the joy uh, that was set before him, rather than pay attention to the trouble that he had to face. 
rather than pay attention to the pain that he would have to endure, rather to give in to uh, uh, the shame uh, that he was going through. Uh, he worked because of the joy that was set before him that he would sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, uh, we. he was tempted uh, as we are, but he yielded not to temptations. And when we are nearing the cross uh, uh, of our troubles in, in life, we must understand just like Jesus, when he was nearing the cross, uh, he prayed uh, to be excused from the cross. You don't believe me? Read what Luke said. He prayed three times. Uh, and, and, and when he prayed, he asked the Lord, uh, Lord, Father, remove this bitter cup. But then uh, as he was praying, he prayed so hard that sweat like drops of blood uh, dropped down and he continued to pray. But then uh, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. So often we sing uh, the song, uh, uh, thy will be done, and we pray the prayer, uh, thy will be done. But do we really mean it? Uh, uh, before I close, I want to tell you uh, that motivation will cause you to say, I'll go if I have to go by myself. But commitment will, is what will make you keep going when you don't see anybody walking with you. Motivation will cause you to praise God uh, when things are going well. But commitment enables you to praise him when you are sick, broke, disgusted, and down to your very last time when things and people around you seem to be against you, you still hold on to your faith. And today, I'm so glad that Jesus was committed and that he allowed them to carry him to the cross. I'm glad that he allowed them uh, uh, to take him from judgment hall to judgment hall. He allowed them to nail him to the cross. Uh, he allowed him them to put him between two thieves. Uh, he allowed them uh, to pierce him in the side and, and for your sins and mine. Uh, he dropped his head uh, in the lock of his shoulder. But before I tell you what come next, uh, I want to share this with you because here is where we are today. Many of us uh, will sing the old song, Lord, I've started to walk in the light, shining upon me from heaven so bright. I bade the world and its follies adieu. I have started in Jesus and I'm going through. But listen, that the verse two said, many they are who started in the race, uh, but with the light they refuse to keep pace. Others accept it because it's new, but not very many expect to go through. I'm going through, yes, I'm going through. I'll pay the price, whatever others do. I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. I'm going through, Jesus, I'm going through. Well, at the cross, uh, Jesus had already made up his mind. I'm going through, I'm going through the pain and the suffering. I'm going through the shame and the rebuke. I'm going through being lied on and talked about. I'm going through uh, being nailed to the cross. I'm going through, uh, I'm going through, but I, I wanna hear uh, you to hear what he had told uh, 
his disciples and, and those who are against him. He said, now I made up my mind. I'm going through and I'm going to do the will of my father all the way to the end. You can go ahead and nail me to the cross. You can go ahead, put a crown of thorns on my head. You can go ahead and pierce me in the side. You can go ahead uh, oh, and do whatever you want to do. Uh, but I want you to know three days from now, uh, three days, uh, that's all it's going to take. Uh, I'm going in the grave uh, uh, for your sins and my sins. Uh, I'm going in the grave, he said, for my sins and your sins. How do you know? He said it because uh, on the cross, he looked at those uh, that was crucifying him. He looked at those that was abusing him. He looked at those that was scorning him and said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Uh, uh, John 3, 16, let us know that he loved everybody uh that's why i said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and i want to tell you my brothers and sisters uh, when you read uh, in the book of romans chapter 8 uh, and, and you look at that it says uh, never nothing that will separate us from the love of God. I just need to tell you this before I close that there is nothing that will separate you from the love of God. But I need you to understand it's not a lack of God's love that sends folk to hell. It's not a lack of God's love that causes people to lose their soul is a love for their sins that get in the way of them being able to get into the kingdom of God. Uh, I can't uh, get between uh, you and God. Uh, your cousins and your friends, your ace boom coon can't get between you and God, but your sins will get between you and God unless you repent of your sins, uh, your soul will be lost. That's why Jesus said, uh, go ahead uh, and do what you want to. Put me down uh, in a cold, cold grave. But in three days, I'll rise, I'll rise again. Uh, and I found uh, in the scriptures uh, where uh, Mary Magdalena and the other Marys uh, went down to the sepulchral uh, early uh, the first day of the week uh, and they found it, it all ready empty. Uh, I don't know uh, what time he got up, but I do know that according to the record, uh, he got up uh, after three days and three nights in the grave. Uh, I know uh, according to the record, uh, he now uh, sits on the right hand of the Father. I know, according to the record, uh, after he rose, uh, he tabernacled on the earth uh, for 40 days, and then he caught a cloud uh, and went on uh, back to glory. And the angels uh, standing there uh, told his disciples uh, the same way you see him going, he's coming back again. I want you to know that if you stay with God, uh, nothing that anybody can do that will cause you to lose if you stay with God. You got to stay with God. Let him go ahead uh, and climb uh, the walls of the Capitol. Let him go ahead uh, and burn crosses. Uh, let him go ahead uh, and spout out anger and hatred, but stay with the Lord. This is not the first time and it won't be the last time, but, but everybody who stay with the Lord always uh, come out uh, victorious in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to allow 
people to cause me to lose my salvation because of their hatred. God has elevated me above that kind of foolishness. God has elevated me so that I can love folk that hate me. I can love folk that talk about me. I can pray for folk that don't mean me any good. And, and I can smile at folk who try to take away from me because I know that God has promised that he will pay. He'll take care of my enemies. He'll deal with my enemies. And I know that when God deal with it, it's dealt with. Are you committed? Are you just motivated? I'm going through. I'm going to stay with the Lord. I'm going to stay with him. I'm going to stay with him. Will you stay with him? Will you stay with him? Today, I want to extend the invitation. Maybe there is someone who do not know the Lord. Or maybe you're just going through some things and you haven't figured out how to make it through. But I want to tell you today that if you want to be saved, if you want to make it through, if you want to get over all of the bumps in life, the only way is with Jesus. The only way is with him. And this morning, before we do communion, we're going to pray. First of all, we're praying for All the members of Bethlehem Baptist Church, Sawyerville, Alabama, we are praying for all who love the Lord. We are praying for all who are listening and watching this morning. We are praying for all who will listen and watch later. We are praying for those who are suffering in any way. We're praying for all who have chosen to walk with the Lord. Yes. We're asking God blessings on those who are elected to govern over these United States of America. We're praying a special prayer for those who had to be elected under some very ugly situations. Yes. But God always gives us a victory. Yes, yes. We thank God for victory. Of every work of the enemy. So let us pray. Oh God eternal. We come now Lord at this time. We come Lord to say thank you. We thank you dear God for the opportunity to share with these your people. We thank you oh God for your word. We ask forgiveness of our sins. Now Lord. Now, Lord, touch every member of BBC. Touch, oh God, every member of this media audience. Touch, oh God, those who are on the conference lines. Those, oh God, who will watch it at a later time. Touch in the name of Jesus. Father, give us a closer walk with you. Help us, dear God, to walk with you each and every day. Dear Lord, we ask your covering on those who are elected to the presidency and the vice president. We thank you, dear God, for those who were elected uh, to the Senate from Georgia. And Father, we pray your blessings and your covering over all elected officials. We pray, oh God, that you would use, dear God, the incident of last Wednesday to change the hearts and minds of people. 
and bring them, O oh God, into right standing with you. Open the blinded eyes, O oh God, of people, dear God, who say they love you, but find themselves trying to hold hands with the devil. Help them to realize, dear God, that if we're going to walk with you, we must let go of everything that's contrary to you. Now, Lord, now, Lord, we thank you, dear God, for healing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for deliverance. For, Father, you are able to deliver us out of any situation if we just give it to you. There are those, dear God, who have been suffering with cancer, but you are bigger than cancer and more powerful than any type of cancer. Father, you are able to heal uh, MS and muscular dystrophy. Father, you are able to heal uh, an out of control blood pressure and out of control uh, diabetic situation. Father, you are able to control bad eating habits and you are able, dear God, to control uh, drinking habits and alcohol habits and promiscuous sexual desires. Father, you are able to control whatever situation that we are facing today. And Father, help us to know, dear God, that if we surrender to you, you will uh, come to our rescue. You will pull us out of the mire that we have gotten ourselves in. You said, dear God, that if we would change our ways and began to look to you, call on your name out of a pure heart, call on your name, dear God, out of sincerity. If we would turn to you, Lord, and not pretend, but be real with you, uh, you would uh, hear our cry and you would answer us speedily. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch right now that individual, dear God, that's sitting home alone, uh, uh, dear God, feeling somewhat depressed and uh, stressed out. Touch right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That mother, Lord, uh, who is worried about a child, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Let her know, Lord, uh, that you can bring back every wandering child. You can bring back everyone that strayed away from you. You can turn a cussing tongue into a preacher, oh God. You can turn a murderer into a leader of your people. You have turned prostitutes into missionaries. and You have turned, dear God, people who were filled with hate and anger into people who are filled with love. Now, Lord, now, Lord, according to your word, dear God, and I believe your word, uh, that there is nothing too hard for you and there is nothing too far for the arm of God. Bless, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As we prepare to do communion, those of you who are there and have gathered your materials together. I'm just going to tell you briefly, remind you that this is symbolic, it represents his broken body and his shed blood. Yes. Because God allowed his only son his only begotten son, to shed his blood and to suffer his body to be torn so that it barely was still on his bones for your sins and mine. And we partake of this in remembrance of him that saying to commune means to have connection, to be one, 
to be united. And this should bring us closer to him and to one another. Yes. So the scripture tells us that when Jesus was about to get ready to go to the garden of Gethsemane, he called his disciples together around the table. And he presented to them bread that is breaking and he lifted up to heaven and he gave thanks. He said, eat ye this, for this is my broken body. Let us eat. In that manner, he took the cup, the fruit of the vine, and he lifted up and he gave thanks. He says, drink ye all of it, for this is my shed blood. And he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me until I come again. For as long as we are on the face of this earth, we should do this until he come again. And since we are going through and since we are dealing with and since sometimes people feel forgotten, we're going to sign off today, but I want to remind you to join us in the morning, each morning of this week at 6.30 for our devotionals. Join us at noon on Wednesday for our noonday prayer. Join us Wednesday nights for our regular Bible class at 6.30 Wednesday nights. Join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays for a special edition of the Living Gospel, where we will be teaching uh, on FLR's ministry at FLR's ministry as a Facebook account. Join in because we're going to be dealing with some things that God wants his people to know. And when we, as we leave you today, we're going to just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Say it again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. I just want to thank you, Lord. God bless you. And good day.